Welcome to Green Lichen, the channel that helps you find your next favorite game. Today we're going to be talking about Alan Wake 2. We're going to talk about the features of the game, what the gameplay is like and how the graphics are. And don't worry, this video is completely spoiler free. It's also a quick review, so it's less than five minutes to strap in. Let's get started. In Alan Wake 2, you play as two protagonists. The first one is Saga Anderson, who is an FBI agent. And the second is Alan Wake, the protagonist from the first game and also an author. So when you play as Saga, you play an investigation type game loop, which allows you to discover clues that you can put on a board and put string between them in order to solve the case that you're on. When you play as Alan Wake on the other hand you're in like this very dark dingy kind of other world where you have to basically just try to survive. The two gameplay loops play out completely differently from each other so when you do switch between them it does kind of change it up and give you something new to work towards. The stories are intertwined with each other, but there's something you will learn very early in the game when you start off the game. It's also key to note that if you've never played Alan Wake, you don't necessarily need to play Alan Wake in order to play Alan Wake 2. However, it probably would be a good idea to either look for YouTube videos online explaining the story or play the first game before you play this one to get an idea of the story and clear it up. What I can say is that they do explain the story within the first hour in a way that you can kind of understand what happened in the first game, though it doesn't tell you everything. There are a few things to mention in this game. There are these lunch boxes that you can find. The lunch boxes have manuscripts, which if you get enough of these pages, you can upgrade things that you have. This includes things like your weapon and ammo and things like that. And though the story is a narrative based game, it is kind of open world. You do have the ability to travel around certain areas and just explore if you want to. And this is where you will find these lunch boxes. This also gives you the ability to search things and find things in buildings. So for example, near the start of the game, at some point you'll be in the police station. You can walk around the police station. You can actually open up filing cabinets in order to find ammunition and things like that for your gun or other things that might be useful for you going forward. So what this means is that any chance you've got to explore, it's always a good idea to check inside buildings or check things that you might be able to open up to find things that will help you later on in the game. So the basic premise of the way the gameplay works is you are playing a saga, for example, you're going around trying to find clues in order to solve a case. You do go up against certain enemies and things, so you do have a gun and you also have a flashlight. Without going into too much detail, monsters and things in the game cannot go into the light. So there are light areas that you can stand in where the monsters can't see you and they can't attack you. However, if you do fire at these monsters from the light, then they will be able to see you and they will be able to get to you. It basically makes the light completely useless if you do this. Almost as useless as not hitting the like and subscribe button if you like my content. It's kind of something you should do. Your flashlight can be used essentially to deter enemies or essentially kind of hurt them. When you play as Alan Wake, on the other hand, you use the flashlight in order to expose their weaknesses so you know where to fire at in order to kill these enemies. Enemies in this game are unpredictable. You may think you know how a certain type of enemy works and then it just throws something different at you so you never really know what's going to happen. You may come up against an enemy type where you approach it, you're able to get quite close before you attack it and then other times you might come up against the exact same enemy type and it might just rush you instead or do something completely different. So it keeps you on your toes and it can cause you to get jump scared just because you don't expect it to happen. What you will find is there are horror elements within this game. When you play as Saga, there can be kind of some horror-y elements in it. However, the Alan Wake side of it, when you play as him, you'll find that there's a lot more horror involved in it in the way that the world is perceived by Alan Wake and the way he has to deal with things. There are some jump scares in this game, but they're not the kind of jump scares that are going to keep you like stopping for a while. Personally, I don't like horror games, but I can get on with playing Alan Wake 2. There's not been any issues with it for me. And it's because I think the majority of the time with horror games, you don't have any way of retaliating against the monsters that are hunting you down. With Alan Wake 2, you have guns so you can shoot back. This kind of takes the horror element out of the game, though they do chuck in, like I say, jump scares in order to kind of keep you on your toes. Graphically, the gameplay looks really, really good. The graphics are really good. There's a lot of detailed environments involved in it. It also has a really good way of creating this like atmosphere, which kind of gets you involved in it. The detail on the characters and their faces is really in depth and it looks really good. Performance wise, it runs fine. I'm not running on the most up to date technology and I did find it in the cutscenes. Sometimes it kind of out synced itself. So the, the words were being said at the different times of the subtitles. It just essentially meant that it didn't line up as it should, but the cutscenes didn't end too soon before the talking was done. So it wasn't a problem. I am running on a 4060 Ti and some older stuff for my cpu and stuff like that so it's not necessarily the most up-to-date pc in the world but i was able to comfortably run the game on high settings without any issues 
But as this is a story based game, there's not really much more I can really talk about to be fair. So the only other thing that I can actually mention is the fact that this game doesn't have a physical copy. There's no way to get a physical disc at the moment, which is kind of a bit strange. It's just digital only. So if you're someone that would like to get games or like to have a collection of games, you like to have them up on your shelf and display the games you've got. Unfortunately, for now, you're not going to be able to do that. You're going to have to wait around, see if they do decide to do it. It's a little bit strange because, you know, everything's kind of going digital these days. But that is just one of the downfalls to this game and the fact there is not a physical version of it yet but get down in the comments below let me know what you think of the game let me know if you're going to get it or if you played it if you like my content and you want to support me please hit that subscribe button also make sure you hit the like button and the notification bell to keep up to date with what videos i'm releasing and all that's left for me to say is thank you for watching my video i've been green and i will see you in the next one